treat you by your individual nature and, and how you act rather than your race. Right? Like that, that is a biblical principle, right? That's human beings made in the image of God, Amen. right? In the in male and female, he made them, right? Mm -hmm. Straight from Genesis. So that, that's a straight biblical principle, but it's very hard to get there actually through basic, through, you know, and be non-tribal without that verse. Like I think that's the most important verse in, in all the Bible. How about the idea that, that, you know, we have to reason together. Reason is really, really important. Well, obviously, that's deeply important in Christian literature. I mean, that's the logos, right? But, but in, in Jewish thought, that's also the idea behind there's a creator. He made a, a discernible, understandable creation, right? Lobo Shemayim, he is the quote in Hebrew. It's not in heaven, right? It's given to you so you can understand it. And so using reason is actually a biblical value. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have reason, then you just revert back to the feelings. You revert back to how I feel about things, what makes me feel good. And that's really dangerous. The idea that you have chaos. Yes. The, the idea that you have duties in the world, like moral duties in the world to, to your wife, to your children, to your community, to your country, right? the, the, as opposed to a country that is rooted in what am I owed? Right. What, what are the things that, that everyone else owes to me? Uh, so when I was growing up, it was like, okay, if there was a piece of trash on the street, you pick it up. Yeah. Okay, somebody else should have picked it up, but they're not there. So now you're you're going to pick it up. Mm -hmm. And and that that's like a very minute example of the kind of stuff that builds social fabric. Because the opposite is also true. If you don't pick it up, everybody just starts leaving the trash everywhere. I mean, that's basic broken windows theory. Los Angeles. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so you, if, you put, if you keep saying that it's not a problem to problems, it just accumulates until you're like, all right, well, this is a huge problem. And, and not just that. If you, if you if you say it's not my problem, then oh, the problem starts. To right? Wow. That's such a, that is a, a brilliant point of view. I think everybody kind of took the privilege of like, it ain't my job. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. When, Again, biblical and Old Testament is like, well, we're not asking you to be your job, but could you be a good person and do the job? Right. Uh, and I, people, I think public institutions facilitate that kind of thinking because like, okay, well, I gave it the office. Okay, so there's trash on the street. Wasn't well, the trash person whose job it is to like come pick up the trash? And yeah, there is. You did pay that. But also, this is your community. It's where you live. And so it should be pretty important to you that if there's trash on the streets, so if you see something in there, the trash you missed it, probably you should pick it up and just yeah. toss it in the trash. And the, the, like small things like that. So, you know, we're very lucky. We live in a, in a very close knit Jewish community where everybody knows their neighbors. Every, I mean, it really is old school. Everybody knows their neighbors. Everybody's kids know each other. Uh, and kids will, uh, kids doing something bad on the playground, other people's parents will discipline, right? I mean, like it's just treated as community. That is the way that things ought to be in the United States. And I think that that has fallen away. And again, I think the only way, I don't think that can be built. Up yet. I think one of the mistakes you sometimes see on the right is, okay, we'll legislate that top down. We'll grab control of the government and then we will ram morality down, top down, and it'll fix all the problems. We've been, this presidential election, bam, everything will be, that, that's not true. We need foundation. So, social fabric is built ground up and destroyed top down. Right? And, so, and so once it's been destroyed, you can only build one way, and that's to actually get together. People say, what can I do politically? The answer is you can, again, you can go to church. You can get together with your community. You can build a nice community school. You can make sure that your kids know other people who you think are virtuous. You can train them in the ways of virtue. And and, and that's how you build a community that's functional. Yeah, that's what the church teaches. The, the church teaches, like, uh, if they will know you by your fruits, and it's not your works, it's the grace of God. So when you act like a Christian, people would want to be a Christian. But if you say you're a Christian, and you don't act like a Christian, then it causes them to be like, well, I don't even want to be a part of this. This is There's no peace or joy. Sorry for cutting you off, God. No, no worries. But 100%, I think it starts at home, and I think that we've created a society that's very self-involved, and everything is about what, how is it going to be for me, and what can you do for me, and we've all started to lean on our own understanding and what we think is right, and when we do that, when we lean on our own understanding, we're lost, right? It's not always, yeah, it has to be God's. Exactly right. So, um, how do you think, and I think too, at school, how much of it do you think should shape your political views and how can we give kids, you know, a well-rounded information so they feel like, okay, I feel really fed from both sides and now I can make a proper decision. So I don't, I mean, how old are we talking here? Like high school. Okay. So, so the, the truth is that I don't think it's my job to present my kids with both sides. I think it's my job to present my kid with my side and then put good counter arguments to the other side. I'm the parent, they're the kid. Uh, and so they'll get they'll get to a point where they'll make their own decisions because that's the natural way of life. You start not thinking like your parents. You start asking questions. That's fine. But I can only shape their values for a certain period in their life, and I'm not interested in shaping their values to be to 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 basically treat social values in life as a smorgasbord of options. That's not my job. My job is to inculcate the values that I think are correct about the universe into my child. Now that involves me answering difficult questions for my kids all the time, which is why I try to be an informed person who actually has good answers that satisfy me. And I, I try to give like I think complex and dull answers to even my kids, even very young, right? So the other the other day, my ten year old, we're talking about uh, the Warsaw Ghetto uprising. So my father and 